We are here for the Sunday night edition of Wrestling Observer Radio. Vince is over there adjusting something, perhaps himself. The mic thing. Oh, the mic thing. So anyway, we got this show to talk about today. We're going to run down the Survivor Series here match by match, and then we'll boot Vinny out of here and get Dave on for the usual Wrestling Observer Radio. Get the main eventer on the show here. I, I'm the preliminary, the curtain jerker. You are the curtain jerker, and much like Shawn Michaels was tonight. So For the first time in many a year. You're and a, this will be the last time, by the way, I'm ever compared to Shawn Michaels. It will be, except when he uh, loses his last match and is deemed a failure or something like that. Anyway, we're going to skip out on the best show tonight, Hogan Celebrity Wrestling. That one you're going to have to wait until tomorrow for. It's the best show. It's literally the best show in the world. Actually, before we go any further... I want to go up to the website today. We had a poll on Hulk Hogan Celebrity Wrestling. And when I started Observer Live tonight, it was ranked number one in the, uh, what was the best show of the week? Are you voting over and over again? No, I only voted one time, believe it or not. I'll vote. Actually, I didn't, I didn't even vote. So I'll vote right now. What was the best TV show of the week? Raw, SmackDown, ECW, Impact, Ultimate Fighter. This week, by far, it was Hogan Celebrity Wrestling. The Dale Hoya preview on HBO, Hogan Celebrity Wrestling, AAA on Galavision, CMLL on FSC, or Inside MMA. I am going to vote right now for Hogan's Celebrity Championship Wrestling. And it is currently number one. What's number two? 20.4% have voted for Hulk Hogan Celebrity Wrestling. 18.3% have voted for Raw. 14.2% have voted for Impact. Trolls. What's wrong with you people? Complete trolls. ECW is only down to 5%. That was a way better show than Impact. And Raw! And fact. SmackDown. And SmackDown. So anyway, you guys can't possibly be watching the shows this week, because no way SmackDown should be ranked number four. That show sucks. <laughs> we'll talk about that on Tuesday, though, as well as the Hogan Show. Tonight, the main event is the Survivor Series show, which, guess what? Sucked, with the exception of... Actually, it didn't suck. There Parts was of some, it sucked. There was some stuff on the show that was really, really, really bad. But there was also some stuff that was pretty good, including the opener. It was the Survivor Series match. Shawn Michaels, Crime Time, Rey Mysterio, Great Khali, and what a team that was, by the way. Against MVP, JBL, Kane, Miz, and Morrison. What were some of the stories of this match? MVP got a pin. First story was John Morrison's gear. All right. It was the same in 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 cut and 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 texture. It was the same pants and robe he always wears. Where they were this matching, fantastic flaming red, just just amazing to behold. Then the match began. MVP pinned somebody right away. He pinned JTG quickly. I don't know what JTG's done, but something must have gone wrong. Something went wrong somewhere, and M he got pinned by MVP, which is the lowest of the low at this point. And then MVP was quickly pinned by the Great Kali. It was yep. awesome because MVP was celebrating his win to his team, who were all pointing behind him, and he turned around and got judo shot by Kali. The great Kali snuck up on MVP. Yep. He used stealth. So anyway, the the other stories of the show, we had Sean getting his revenge on Miz and Morrison. Uh, that was actually the, the end of the match was the best one, but he uh, or the worst one, depending on how you look at it. He, uh, he pinned Miz. And uh, then I guess it came down to JBL, um, Morrison, Sean, Ray, and Kali. And J uh, JBL and Sean were, were fighting outside, and JBL didn't make it back inside by 10, so he got counted out, believe it or not. And then uh, uh, Morrison was right behind Sean as Sean was giving JBL crotch chops in preparation for the super kick of doom for a second time, which he pinned him on uh, Raw Monday with. And uh, Sean, however, they didn't play this up, but they had a shot from Morrison's uh, vantage point, and Sean is looking towards the big screen, and on the big screen is John Morrison behind him, getting ready for a super kick. So anyway, Sean, of course, ducked, hit a super kick of his own, got the win. Even Stephen Booking, which kind of makes me sad, because I would have liked to have seen Nitro cut promos for months about how he pinned Sean with his own move, but... Now, apparently, that feud is already over, that so that be, sucked. That may be the whole thing. But uh, at least the Kane Ray feud is over as well as, as uh, Ray pinned Kane. And anyway, the best part of the match was Sean, Ray, and Kali celebrating afterwards because Kali is tall and the other two men are not. So <laughs> it was funny. He went to raise their arms. He actually almost literally yanked Ray into the air. Sean sold like he was hanging like a puppet, and they both climbed the rope so Kali could raise their arms. They were a grand trio. I kind of hope they stick together, even though I know they're not going to. But uh, th this was a fun match. Uh, you, you covered most of the highlights. There was a point where JBL was in there with Sean, and the crowd chanted, You can't wrestle. With Great Kali on the apron. They were chanting this at JBL. 
You know, that amazed me. Um, the Miz and Ray work great together. I realize almost everyone works great, works great with Ray, but there's something about Miz that makes him just the perfect opponent for Ray. I don't know if he's just the perfect size or he just takes everything great, but every I thought they look clunky, actually. Oh, well, maybe it's just my opinion. But I something about Miz and Ray that, that that's good stuff. We, uh, obviously, most people are good with Ray, but there you go. And um, I think that's all I got. Ray pinned Kane with the Andre the Giant splash off of Kali's shoulders, and Kali managed to do this without getting anyone killed, so that's good. And uh, yeah, this was... For a long time, the best match on the show. Anyway, they opened up the show. I forgot to mention this with JR in a very somber manner. Recapping the Jeff Hardy situation and basically saying everything that they had said on the uh, on the show earlier, or on the website earlier. And they mentioned that the story had been picked up by a number of outlets, including CNN. And ABC. Lies. <laughs> Lies, lies, lies. There was also a point here where JBL hooked an abdominal stretch, and Matt, Matt Stryker actually said, Shades of Skandor Akbar. Yeah. I consider myself a wrestling nerd. I don't think I've ever actually seen Skandor Akbar wrestle. Matt Stryker is such a wrestling nerd. We had Eve and Triple H doing an article, or an interview, where Eve interviewed him and asked him, what are your thoughts, and, and Hunter said, well, he he's crawled his, clawed his way to the top of here before, and he'll do it again. And anyway, they uh, he mentioned that, you know, if he's not here, I'll just do the match with Kozlov one-on-one. And everybody booed, including me. That <laughs> was going to be a horrible match, I thought. And I was right. You were right. Then we had the women. Michelle, Maurice, Natalia, Victoria, and Maria against Beth, Mickey, Jillian, Candice, and Kelly. Let me read some of these eliminations right here. Victoria... One of the best workers on the in the match was pinned by Kelly. Mickey James was pinned by Michelle McCool. We had Mickey James getting pinned by Maurice. You just said Mickey was pinned twice. We had Natalia. I said Mickey pinned McCool. I see. I'm sorry. We had Natalia being pinned by Candice Michelle. Exactly. Yes. And it came down to Maurice, and uh, Maurice actually did a hell of a job for herself, all things considered. She uh, she beat uh, Candice with, I guess, Sean's reverse figure four, but everybody still went, woo! And then she pinned Maurice with the bitch clamp, or whatever it's called, or I'm sorry, uh, Phoenix, Beth Phoenix pinned Maurice with the bitch clamp, and uh, that was the end of that. And uh, this was a really bad match. <laughs> But there, it had its moments, I will say that. And Maurice really did have a good night. Maurice, uh, she, and she was booked strong. There were th- four eliminations by her team, and she had three of them. And uh, then the, it came down to her and Beth, and I thought, this is going to suck. And suddenly Maurice whipped out this hook kick, and I thought, holy crap! And they only went like a minute, but it was a fine little minute. And uh, beyond that, yeah, the story of the match is just the wacky eliminations, like you say. Uh, Natalia eliminated by Candace after Candace withstood the sar- sharpshooter. Yeah, that is bullshit. There's a point here where uh, Kelly Kelly and Maria were trying to do Lucha Libre. It was an epic, epic fail. And I guess nobody died, so it could have been worse. But, yeah, this is no good. Matt did an interview about his brother. He said he'd been... There was, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm bad tonight. But there was one of the highlights in this match. Very early, Michelle and Maurice were fighting. And you recall, they're on the SmackDown team together. And there was a chant of, let them fight. And I thought, who could possibly care about this? And then I realized it was the Raw team chanting this. That was funny. Anyway, we had Matt doing an interview about his brother in the hospital, and he said he'd expected the worst. He said Jeff had been hit in the back of the head with a blunt object. He said, as for tonight, who knows? And Todd wanted to know how it happened, and Matt said he didn't know. And then they had the long, awkward zoom in on his face as he stood there. How do you think this happened, Matt? I I want him to say, do I look like Sherlock Holmes? I don't even know I wasn't there. And we had Undertaker and Big Show in a casket match. This sucked in every way. First off, they had a casket out there, and uh, <laughs> and they brawled in the ring, and they brawled outside, and and uh, eventually Big Show just got mad, and he destroyed the casket. And he was like, I'm leaving. And so he destroys the casket, and he goes to walk out, and as he's getting up the ramp, suddenly a giant wall of flame erupted in front of him, which caused him to be scared. And then monks began chanting, and they brought another casket out onto the ramp. So the guys continue fighting, and uh, the casket ends up standing on its end, and the door swings open. So it's like a refrigerator now. And uh, this, of course, scared show, even though a refrigerator you think would be his friend. And they're brawling all over the place, and 
And then we get to the finish, which was the fucking dumbest finish I have ever seen in my entire life. The casket is on the ramp, as I noted, open like a refrigerator. And Big Show is being punched repeatedly in the face. And he's stumbling backwards. And he's stumbling backwards. Away from the casket. And he finally gets to the edge of the stage. And he's got one foot on the edge. And he's got one foot on the edge. And he's shaking his arms. And he's off balance. And Undertaker punches him again. And he's teasing this nesty plunge to the cement. And as Undertaker's about to send this 500-pound man off the... About off the edge of this this uh, ramp to the cement and his death, Undertaker suddenly stops, takes him by the head, throws him into the refrigerator, which falls down and the lid closes, and thus the match is over. So to recap, Undertaker had the opposite opportunity in this match, in this grudge match with the Big Show, to kill the Big Show, and instead, at the very last moment, he threw him into a padded box. This sucked. This sucked. You're actually giving it too much credit. Every uh, conceivable way this sucked. It was, it was, the first thing they did was a table spot, so then they went in the ring and started to wrestle and nobody cared. Big Show threw Taker into the casket, and then he told the referees, close it. And they responded, I'm not making this up. No, you close it. And then it went back and forth for a while. Finally, he went to close it. Undertaker blocked it by sticking one leg out of the box, and so the, the box could not be closed. And all I could think was, jump on the lid and break his damn leg. But he did not do that. They fought They fought back and forth for a while. Then Show decided he had enough. This is when, as you noted, he destroyed the casket. Only all that really happened was he just turned it upside down. The funny thing was, he had just laid Undertaker out. He hit the choke slam. He rolled outside, and he turned the box over. And at that point, Undertaker sat up, and he, there was rage in his face, as if he said, You bastard! You turned my box over! And so Big Show turned to flee... At which point, the giant wall of flame shot up, and he turned around, and you, you noted he is scared of the wall of fire. And I thought, yes, I would be too. And then they brawled some more, and then, and then as you noted, Undertaker, in winning the match, actually saved the big show from certain doom. Put him in a box. He put him a in a padded box. A padded silk lined. This was not lined, even a wooden box like Goldberg in WCW. It was no, a padded box. A padded silk lined, comfy little box where he is now nice and safe and warm. This sucked. Then we had a skit with the Bella Twins, the Colons, Charlie Haas, and the Gobbledygooker, and the Boogeyman, of which no more needs to be said. It was wacky. Then we got a skit with Orton and his team. It was awesome. It cut from the, all this Gobbledygooker nonsense. It cuts to Team Orton, who are all standing there like bowling pins staring at the camera, and then Orton turns around and starts to talk to them. Hokey! See, uh, Cody and Orton almost came to blows, and the team broke it up. That led us to Batista, Punk, Truth, Kofi, and Matt Hardy against Orton, Regal, Shelton, Mark Henry, and Cody Rhodes. I guess things of note here, Punk pinned Regal in five seconds with a go-to-sleep, which was complete bullshit, at which point Layla threw a shoe, a high-heeled shoe at Punk, and hit him in the eyeball. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. A shoe. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. I don't think anyone knew what was happening, including, obviously, Punk. And uh, they didn't show it until replay. And later he was seen in the corner. Uh, hey, it looked like he had me have been slightly cut by the shoe, laughing. Holding his eye and laughing at the <laughs> idiocy of this. Yes. So then Matt, who of course has knee problems, of course did a new, uh, moonsault right under both knees. We had Truth pinned yet again by Shelton. We had uh, Orton pinning a couple of guys. We had the uh, Mark Henry pinning uh, Matt Hardy. At which point, nobody, not a single, there were six fucking commentators at ringside. And not a single one noted that the ECW champion had just been pinned by Mark Henry. And the only reason I remembered that was because when Mark Henry pinned Matt Hardy, he celebrated like he'd pinned the ECW champion. <laughs> and I thought, he just pinned the ECW champion. Why the fuck is nobody even making mention of this? So, anyway, then at, we had... At that point, uh, it was uh, down to Dave on four. Dave on four. He uh, started to pin people one by one. And it came down to Dave, Orton, and Cody. And Dave went for the power bomb on Cody, but Orton got the blind tag. And as Dave hit his move, the ref told him, no, Cody is not legal. At which point, Dave turned right around into RKO for the pin. And, of course, since uh, Dave had been outsmarted by a wiser man, everybody cheered, they counted along, and uh, it was a great finish. Dave has to be turning heel. I'm, I'm certain Dave Batista has got to be turning heel. He, it does seem like he has done everything he could possibly do as a baby face, but I don't care. This finish was just too awesome not to love. The, the match I didn't love it. I'm just telling yeah. you. Dave's turning heel. Okay. Fine. 
<laughs> but th- 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 this was just great. It, it, it all worked so perfect. The timing was uh, was awesome. It's one of those things where everyone knew it was going to happen, and then it happened anyway, and it still all made sense. And uh, and uh, Randy Orton still gets to yell at Cody Rhodes for not being a match for Dave, and he had to save Cody's ass. So the storyline all continues, and it all makes sense. Match itself was something special. Finish was five stars. Eve interviewed Kozlov, and the only reason I make mention of this is because I've mentioned many times how awful Eve is in her role. It's like she has to go home and get a microphone and stand in front of the mirror and try and look as pretty as possible and memorize it. And if you ever watch her, she never changes her facial expression. No. Whether she's interviewing a heel or a baby face, regardless of what they say, regardless of if it is a serious situation or a comedy situation, she always looks exactly, exactly the same. And this was no uh, exception here. And Rawson alerted us that Jeff would not, in fact, be able to compete here tonight. And he said, ironically, the video package we're about to see is all about Jeff. So, oops. Which led us to... I don't even know what to say about this match. Well, I have a lot to say. <laughs> it led us to Vladimir Kozlov against Hunter Hearst Helmsley. All right. These guys had a bad match, a bunch of bad matches on the road. They decide to add Jeff Hardy to the match. And then at the last minute, I realize they had an angle, but... They took him out, which means they had to do this bad match for 15 minutes. This had to be the longest 15 minutes of Triple H's life, because I know it was the longest 15 minutes of my life. They had the most boring match you could possibly imagine. The people hated it. They chanted boring. They chanted, uh, actually, they just repeatedly chanted boring. I think there was a We Want Hardy chant in here somewhere. There was boring, there was We Want Jeff. There was, uh, at the very beginning, a light USA chant, but that turned to apathy that soon. died very, very quickly. So after this horrendous match filled with bear hugs, yeah. and uh, I, they, they were going, it was all wrestling, all mat wrestling on the ground, and they, they, could try, they were trying something basic and something uh, realistic. But the truth was, if this had been a real fight, an MMA fight like this would have been terribly boring. Why was, must I relive this fight? There was lots of bear hugs on the no ground. No more speaking of this this match. Then came the finish. Although, I might add that uh, Triple H early on was out-wrestling this Sambo champion. Right. And for, for uh, those of you that have not heard the story, Fedor fucking Emelianenko was out-wrestled by a Sambo champion last week. But not Hunter. Not Hunter. He was out-wrestling this Sambo champion. So, anyway, finally, Hunter hit the pedigree and collapsed. And that's when Vicky came out on the ramp and said she had promised a three-way, and thank God, he's here. And he, of course, ended up being Edge with a much fatter beard than mine. Yes. He is also doing an Evan Tanner tribute beard, apparently. And he ran down and speared Triple H out of his boots. He was about to uh, get the pin when Jeff Hardy, with bright red hair, ran down and uh, made the save. And he went to hit Edge with a chair, but hit Triple H instead. He uh, threw the chair and clunked Kozlov. Edge then speared Jeff and uh, pinned Triple H. I could complain about why all of these run-ins and chair shots were not a DQ, but I will assume that the general manager of SmackDown told the referee not to call a DQ no matter what happened. I will just presume that for right now. But uh, all of this, all the horrible match aside... And the uh, and the wacky DQ, no DQ thing aside, this was a five-star angle. So, thumbs up. I just Sweet wa- Jesus' match sucked, though. I just want to note that earlier in the show, they were discussing how nobody knew what happened to Jeff. And I turned to Craig and I said, maybe Edge got him. I was right. I was right. Edge took out Jeff Hardy and took his place in the match and regained his belt. And then he went to celebrate with Vicky. And Edge, uh, Edge's time off is kind to him. He's... Not in uh, te- in uh, peak physical shape. He's pretty smooth, and he was standing up there, very smooth, with, with a, like a 1980s heel wrestler body and his big giant beard. And I thought he looks like John Tatum. That would make Vicky Guerrero his Missy Hyatt, which is just strange to think about. And yes, I have no idea how to rate this segment. The match itself was quite boring. Uh, they tried something quite different. Quite boring. This was horrible. <laughs> they tried something different. It failed on every level. Tried what different? St- doing mat wrestling and only mat wrestling. They didn't do mat wrestling and only mat wrestling. They had a wrestling match. It just fucking sucked. Fine. Point. It did not work. Will you agree with me there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was a bad, horrible match. Yes. And then there was a really, really awesome angle. And, uh, yeah. And, and you had to pay for it. So, I don't know. It was memorable. Then we had Jericho and Cena for the world title. And uh place went nuts for Cena, of course. And uh, he has a big scar on his neck. 
And uh, this was not the scene of old. He he uh, he looked largely the same, a little bit smaller. But what the hell can you do when you had a broken neck or a neck surgery deal? And uh, seemed very gun shy. They they played up his gun shyness in the uh, storyline. He, he took a bump off a shoulder tackle, a shoulder tackle, and he grabbed his neck and rolled to the floor and just started like wiggling his fingers and arms and made sure everything was still in place. This is not the gun shy I was speaking of. He went up top early, which of course, if you that recall, too, he too. went up top at SummerSlam and uh, came off and was power bombed and killed. And so he went up early, but then changed his mind and came back down because he was in fact gun shy. Which led to the big spot at the end of the match where he finally did go up top and uh, held his breath and pointed to the stars and then did the flying leg drop. And Michael Cole screamed, the confidence is back! And I thought, it would be nice if that took more than 15 minutes. But uh, this is wrestling and everybody has to be, everything has to be rushed. So anyway, Jericho worked over the neck, beat him all over the place. And for those of you wondering what the finish could be... Uh, and, of course, the arguments were, well, Cena's making his big return in his hometown, so it makes no, it really makes no sense for him to uh, not win this match. But at the same time, why did Batista win and then lose the title? Why did Jericho get it back if he's just going to lose it again? Well, the answer is, who the fuck knows? Jericho lost again, uh, FU'd for the pin, and it was a it was a fine match. They've certainly had much, much better matches and much, much better main events. But uh, I guess for Cena's first match back in three months, this was about the best you could hope for. This is not a guy like Shawn Michaels. No. I don't know if you've ever noticed <laughs> that Cena and Shawn Michaels are not the same. True. But Shawn Michaels could leave for four years and come back in his, his well, not his first match, but basically his first match back, at least on a major stage. Awesome. Whereas Cena's a guy who can be out three months, and he's a little bit rusty when he comes back. Yes, we, 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 that's, that's what we got here. We talked about before how the mark of a great wrestler is someone who can, as you say, take a uh, long, long time off and come back, and it looks like they haven't missed a day, and Shawn Michaels is in that group, and The Rock is in that group, and some other guys. And yes, John Cena is, in fact, not as good as, John, uh, as Shawn Michaels or The Rock. But God bless him, he, he had a giant reaction here. They had a fine match. Uh, they worked the neck a lot, which, of course, made sense, and... And uh, there's nothing wrong with it. My favorite part was actually the very beginning when Cena com- he comes out and they're doing the intros and he tears his shirt off and the crowd goes crazy. And they get to Jericho who has this just sneer on his face. <laughs> He's so appalled at this pathetic display of, 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 uh, of, of bodybuilding for the crowd and this pathetic appeal for their love and he can't stand it. And then they had a little match and it was fine. And, and like you say, I guess they had, to have a, have, they had to have a finish and may as well have Cena win. So there you go. He is now the world heavyweight champion. Which is the belt that does not spin. Yeah, I noticed that when he when he had the world title belt, I thought, you got that belt, and uh, Edge is stuck with that shitty spinner belt. So, what the hell can you do? But thumbs I, in the middle show is the best I can give this. I, I think they should negotiate a belt swap. They should uh, arrange a meeting on Raw, and they come with, like, hostages, where each of the belt is a hostage, and they just trade belts. Uh, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a, a, a mild thumbs-up show. It wasn't great or anything, but on the whole, I had fun. So thumbs in the middle. That's it for uh, this segment. We'll be back in just a moment here with Dave. And uh, Vinny and I will be back Tuesday night with the SmackDown Report and uh, Raw and Hogan Celebrity Wrestling, which was uh, significantly better than this program. Well, SmackDown wasn't, but Hogan's was. So that's the plan. We'll be back in just a moment. Bye.